Hello and welcome to Skid Steer Genius. I want to introduce you to our 4014 controller. This is a CAN bus controller with a 7 pin Trident connector that plugs directly into your Bobcat. On the output side it's got a male Deutsch 14 pin connector. Now when you look inside this you're not going to see all the pins connected. It is a 14 pin connector but we don't use all the pins. In the case of this one we use four of the pins for control. We offer a power pin which is the K pin and then we also have our ground pin here. So in all, in all you're going to see six pins inside this controller. It's a really smart controller. Uh, it's designed to go on any 14 pin attachment that uses up to four controls. So that could be your snow blowers, in some cases your soil conditioners, some of the older uh, cold planers, that type of thing. We also offer three other options. We have a single channel output which is our CB1000. We have a dual channel output which is our CB2000X. And soon to come this, this spring of 2017, we've got the CB6014, uh, which is a six channel 14 pin controller. It looks almost identical to this, just a little bit longer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna run through how this operates. And I'll give you some close up so you can do some troubleshooting on your own if there's something that you need to submit, something that you're not quite sure of when you're first hooking these up. First thing I wanna talk about is we ship these ready to go with momentary, with momentary uh, action selected. That means when you plug it in, you touch one of the buttons, one of the four, the four buttons that you're, gonna, that you're gonna operate this with, and they, the signals will latch, or will, sorry, will not latch, they will just work momentarily. So as long as you push the button down and then let go, when you push down, it's gonna lock and it's gonna give you power out here. When you let go, it's gonna release that power. But we have an option to program two of these channels. And what that does for you is that allows you to program them in such a way that when you touch the button, and take your thumb off it will stay locked on so power will continuously operate through here this works for some people who have like uh, there's there's a few attachments out there that are, that are pullers they're tree pullers but they also have a grapple on there and what they want to do is they want to shut off the tree puller action and operate the grapple or vice versa and what this allows you to do is turn it on and off so it's locked on and you don't have to hold your thumb down the whole time you're operating it you just tap it and when you want to release it, just tap it again and it'll release. So it's really smart. This is much smaller, smarter than the standard controllers that you see in the, the regular Bobcat attachments. This, uh, this took a lot of thought to come out with and it's based on a lot of the feedback the customers have given us. So we think you'll be really happy with this, but I, I, I've noticed there have been a little few issues with people not quite understanding how these work. And like I said, the main thing is we ship it to you ready to go. So you don't really have to do anything. It's only if you want to change the programming. Uh, there's a little bit of, there's. It's a little bit complicated maybe because you have to hold the button down for a few seconds and I'm just going to go through that with you so you fully understand that. Okay, so let's talk about operation. You'll see it's just a plain old 14 pin here. On this side we've got the 7 pin CAN bus. And right on the back here we actually have an LED. This is our indicator status LED. And what this does is this kind of tells us what's going on inside the machine. And it really helps us with troubleshooting. It tells us that the thing's operating properly and it kind of even gives us a status of how the controls are working. So this is really helpful for us because on our earlier ones we didn't have any indication and what would end up happening is people would say oh the unit doesn't work so we need to send uh, we need to send it back and we would get it back and it would work perfectly. So we were able to actually identify now that most of the time it's a problem with people's machines. So all I do here is I just plug it in it's just like a standard seven pin. Here's my, con here's my connector and I'm going to uh, Plug this in and I'm going to get as close up as possible to this when we turn it on. When I turn it on here and you'll see a little flashing. It flashes red first and it flickers green. You'll see a red again and now it's just flickering green. And that's just telling us that hey, I'm awake, I've got power, I'm talking to the machine, everything's good, let's get going. So now I'm going to just uh, bring it in a little bit closer so you can see what happens. So you see my indicator flashing here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach over and I'm going to touch on the left stick. I'm going to touch paddle number one. And what we call these is, uh, we actually have function names for these. We call the left paddle uh, up. We call that B1. Call the le left paddle down B2. On the right stick, there's a paddle that looks identical to this one. We call that one on the upside, we call that uh, C1. And we call the lower side C2. So that just makes it easier for us to identify it when we're talking internally. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push B1. You can see what happens. See how it locks on red? If I let go, it goes back to the flicker. That tells me that when I'm touching this, it's powering uh, the, the, um, the E pin. And it's telling me that, okay, there's power there and everything's working. Now I'm going to touch the lower part of that paddle, which we call B2. 
You see the red status LED comes on again. And now what that's doing is that's firing pin uh, F in the connector. I go over to C1, I push it. See the red LED comes on again. That is firing the G pin in the connector. And then I go down to the bottom part of this and I push that, that button and you see how it fires it up again and that is firing pin H. So as soon as I let go with my hand, everything lets go and it starts flickering again. Again, that's telling me that, hey, I'm alive, I'm talking to the bus, everything's good, uh, let's go on. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to reprogram this. And that seems to be something tricky for people. Again, you don't generally need to do this unless you have a certain attachment that needs to have power to have something turned off. So in most cases, this isn't gonna be, this isn't gonna be something you're gonna do. But for the few people that have done this or that need to change it back and forth, because it's not a permanent thing. It's, it's, it stays programmed as long as you want it programmed. But as soon as you want to deprogram it, you can go through that same step again. It'll deprogram. So here we go. I'm going to go and I'm going to jump in the machine and I'm going to show you how to program it. Okay, so I'm going to just show you here. All I need to do actually is just get power to the controller. Just by turning on the run button, I don't actually have to start the machine to do anything. All I'm trying to do is get power to the controller and program it to what I want it to do and then shut it back off again. So all I do is I turn this power button on and at the same time, if I'm gonna program, I wanna program, this is again, this was B1, B2. Uh, you're only allowed to program B1 or C1 to latching and the reason for that is there's only so much current that can be drawn through this, uh, otherwise you'll start blowing fuses. So. What we do here is when we turn the uh, run button on, we hold this button down at the same time. So I'm gonna attempt to do that while I'm holding my phone and we'll see how it goes. And, uh, and uh, then you'll see exactly what happens on the controller as well. So here we go. While I hold this button down, I'm gonna reach up, I'm gonna hit my run button, okay? And I look down here and what I see is the red LED locked on. And what I'm doing is I'm holding it until it changed from status red to green. That tells me that I've programmed it. But now it will not work. What I have to do now is I have to come back up here. I have to hit my stop button, okay? And now what it does is it, it's locked it in place. So now when I turn this back on again, if I hit my run button, it's gonna come back on again. I look down at my thing and it's, it's status, okay? See it's flickering? That tells me the status is good. Now when I go on up and I touch my B1 button, if I touch it for a second. All right, so I've just turned it off and I'm gonna turn the power back on again. And we're gonna look down and see what the status is doing. It goes green, solid for a minute, and then it starts to flicker. That says, hey, I'm talking to the bus, everything's good. Now that means I've now programmed my B1 button to be latching. However, it doesn't just latch automatically when you tap it. You have to hold it down for a few seconds and the reason we did that is so that you still had some momentary control on some of the things that you're trying to run because maybe you only want to touch it for a second and you don't want to have to go and deprogram it. So what we make you do, since it is a latching function and something that you might hold on for hours, we make you hold this down for a few seconds until we see the status indicator. If we look at the status indicator, we hold it down, hold it down, and we'll see the status indicator all of a sudden stays locked okay and now we're good to go that what that's telling me is that I've actually locked that button in place there's power going there and look hands-free I don't have my hands on here anymore at all so now I can go and I can actually operate other channels and those channels will they won't lock on but they'll be momentary but while this one's locked on so I can go this is my B1 my B2 I come over this side this is my C1 my C2 and I can operate these buttons and and they're completely not affected by what's going on over here. Now, if I want to touch this, I want to touch my B1 again, it'll actually unlatch it. So here we go, watch this. I'm just gonna hold it down for a second. And now I see the status comes back and it's no longer locked. I can go back and I can touch it for a second if I just need to, maybe I need to move something very quickly. I can do that or I can hold it down once again for a few seconds. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna come back on, it's gonna latch for me. See, it's latched. My hand is no longer on the controls and it's latched. So now I'll just tap it again and off it goes. Now, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do this in reverse uh, so people know how to deactivate this. So here we go. What I wanna do is I wanna take this B1 off of here. So this one, this is the button that I've got in the latch position. I'm gonna take this off and deprogram it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the key on again while I'm holding this button. 
So all I do is hold it down here, reach up, hit my run button. See my little emblem comes up here and I go down to my status and you see my status is red and all of a sudden it flickers green. That tells me, hey, I'm deprogrammed now. So now when I go and I use this, oh, sorry, my mistake. What I need to do now is I need to turn the key off. So now with the key off, I've turned it back on again. I come down here, there's my status, it's flickering. Now I can go to my B1, B1, and it's momentary. B2, momentary, C1, momentary, C2, momentary. And that's it, that's as, that's as simple as we could possibly make it without making it so that you're programming it and unprogramming it all the time. We wanted to make it a little bit you know, more difficult just so that you didn't accidentally program it or deprogram it. And that's it. If you have any questions, contact us at our website. Control naming conventions. The center toggle on the left stick, moving it left, is A1. Moving it right is A2. Reaching over to the paddle on the left stick, the top part of the button is B1. Lower part of the button is B2. On the right stick of a pilot control, using the inner paddle, the upper portion is C1. Pushing the lower part is C2. The naming convention for hand foot control models. The center toggle on the left stick, moving it to the left, is A1. Moving it to the right is A2. Reaching to the inner button, top portion is B1, lower portion is B2. The right stick of a hand foot control model, inner button, top part of that button is C1, lower part C2. Now you have to remember this does not turn the pump on and off, okay? The pump does not get turned on and off when we use this. So you have to always remember that these are just buttons that select. But I want to come over to the stick over here and I either use this, this little toggle that goes left and right, that turns my pump on momentarily either forward or reverse. So depending on which way I turn this, my pump is either going to go in the forward direction or the rear direction. Now if I want to lock my pump on, I want to come around to this side and this trigger button right here. This triggers my pump on and off. So touch it once, pump comes on, stays on. Touch it again, it turns off. Now of course, this is all has to happen with your hydraulic control button turned on. So to make this actually work, I have to touch this button and see this LED, this little light comes on. This tells me that, okay, I'm ready to go here. Now I can use my hydraulics. If you're not getting any hydraulics operating on your machine, make sure you've got the key on, everything's running, and you've touched this button here. Then you can come down and you can use either this toggle or you can come around and use this button here. Okay. I hope you've learned something here. Once again, I'm Rob from Skits Your Genius. If you have any questions, contact us through the website, email, or give us a call. Uh, we're always happy to take your inquiries. Uh, it's always nice, though, if you check the FAQ first. We're always posting more and more information about this as we as we learn a little bit more from our customers and what they're needing. So we're always trying to put new, new information up and keep everything nice and fresh up there. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks very much.